We told Forever Blue Shirts a few years back that you almost made a trade for Adam Oates, um, but it didn't go through. What are some other big deals you almost made? And what's one player that GMs would call you about constantly that you always refuse to move? Uh, well, there was quite a number of players that I wouldn't mm-hmm. that I wouldn't move. Um, uh, probably some that I that I should have that I didn't want to. Uh, I, you know, the Adam Oates trade sticks out to me in uh, my memory because it was something I was ready to do. And uh, Roger Nielsen didn't want to do it. He just didn't want to lose, you know, to trade Turcotte and Patrick for uh, Cavallini and uh, Adam Oates. And uh, we know the rest is history about Adam Oates. But um, th- 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 there really wasn't... Uh, I mean, what they, what that course they would call you about was your young players that you maybe don't have quite a good enough read on and they want to sort of steal them from you. And, uh, you know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't do that. Um, there really, there really isn't that many. Now I, I can tell you, I made a couple of, of or one that I can think of bad trade, a, a trade I regret, um, but I made at least 10 that I'm, I'm thrilled with that we made. So uh, and and what, like anything in life, when you're when you're in that business of uh, trading hockey players, um, you can't bat a thousand. You're gonna hope that you can bat seven fifty, and mm-hmm. uh, and and that would be a good career. Yeah, I'm sure you got a lot of calls for such a good team. Um, talking about the magical 1994 season, the 30th anniversary of the Stanley Cup team is approaching. Um, can you reflect on what it still means to you today? You know, it, it actually uh, um, has grown in um, notoriety for me personally. Um, it, uh, I, I was talking about this the other day. It seems now like um, you've, uh, it's almost like a mythological thing now. <laughs> it's like, people wonder, well, how did you do it? You know, like, how did that ever happen? How did you put it together? How did, you know, that it's only happened once since 1940 and how, how did you do it? And so they want to talk to you and meet you and see you uh, because it's, it's, it's been that way. I, in when it was, you know, more fresh, like the first 10 years, let's say, um, every, I think people thought, well, it's going to happen again soon you know they're going to win again and uh uh so you weren't or i didn't feel like it was um as big a deal as it is today i i I don't know maybe i'm wrong and maybe the fans would say that i'm wrong that it was a but i for me personally um i get more um you know i i i i get I, I feel good about it today. I, it, it it grows and gets better and better. I guess that's what I want to say. It's like old wine or something. It always, uh, it ages well with time. And I think that um, uh, for 94, uh, whether the Rangers win it this year or they, they win it next year or five years from now, um, there'll never be another 94. It'll always stick out to everybody because of the fact that it was so long. The team was... Uh, was this team that everybody loved right from day one and they started winning right away and never stopped all season. And, um, and then took that ride in the playoffs that, you know, a typical Ranger ride of, you never knew, are they going to blow it? Are they going to win it? Are they, you know, how, how can this happen? The Vancouver series, like, Oh my goodness, how can we, how can this happen that we don't win it in game five? And then you don't win it in game six. And, and then you went three to two in game seven and the curse is gone. And um, so it was really a, a, a tremendous ride for all the fans, I think, and all, for all the uh, people involved with the, with the Rangers that year. And uh, in other years too, we had some really, I, I would say um, we had probably eight really good years out of my 11. Uh, we had three where we were trying to rebuild the team. And uh, that you always hit a lot of bumps in the road when you're trying to rebuild. Um, but we had eight really good ones. And my memories of uh, being there are so good and 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 uh, so cherished to me right now. Yeah. Though, like you said, there's never going to be a team like the 94 team. But hopefully the Rangers get their fifth cup in June. 
Um, now let's talk about your new podcast, NHL Wraparound. What can you tell us about it, and um, what will Hawk? When will hockey fans be able to hear it? Well, uh, it, we're going to start in in later in January of this coming year, and it's um, uh, I'm going to be doing it with uh, a good friend of mine, Vic Morin, and Vic has been with ESPN for over 30 years in in uh, production, uh, and he was heavily involved in every contract that ESPN had for the National Hockey League. Um, as you know, they've they've had the rights a couple of a few different times. And um, and when they didn't have the rights, they all, they had shows that they were producing all the time about the NHL. So he's always been involved in that. I met Vic uh, in the early 90s uh, is him and his dad were big Ranger fans. And uh, and he was also at ESPN. So the two things went together. Uh, he has a, an, an, a, a really uncanny memory for everything that's gone on during his lifetime in watching hockey. I have a, a pretty good memory myself, as you can tell. And uh, we both have a very big Rolodex of friends and associates that we can call on uh, to be on the show. So uh, the reason we call it Wraparound is because we're trying to wrap today's hockey, today's issues, today's um, National Hockey League with a little bit of yesterday. So that if you talk, just like you and I have been talking and you said, what are the comparisons you see between yesterday and today um, we can both speak to that because we are both there and did that so that's one of the blessings of getting old is that you know a lot about history um, and and I think that uh, whether you're an older fan or a younger fan there'll be something in it for you and and our um, my motto at least in it is you're going to leave every episode having learned something you didn't know when you tuned in uh, so that's really what I want to accomplish. It's going to be a lot of fun and, um, uh, we're very excited about it. Yeah. I'm excited to listen. I think that's a great motto because whenever I go into a podcast, I always want to take something out of it and learn a new thing, but Neil, thank you so much, um, for taking the time and giving Ranger fans all the wonderful memories that we're all going to remember to tell fans, um, and, families about the rangers and all that you did for the team and fans don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and to check out foreverblueshirts.com thank you all for listening